Well, hi, I'm Philip. And I'm Andrew. And together we are the Oliver Twins. And uh, in today's Let's Play, we're going to look at Grand Prix Simulator, which we wrote back in the late part of... 1986. It's well, so it, long ago, 29 years ago. I seem to remember we did quite a lot over Christmas actually. Uh, yeah, and then the game was uh, sort of developed into January, took about eight weeks, and then released in March of 87. Okay, let's go on and play, and while we play, we can carry on talking about uh, the things that we remember about writing it. So, two player game. Go! And we accelerate and rotate, and it's flipping hard, although we're off to a flying start with a grey computer car way behind. That's not using actually any clever AI intelligence, that was actually just recorded by us. Uh, we just record the keys, play in the game, and decided to sort of play it, playing relatively slow to give uh, people on the first few tracks a bit of a chance to beat it. I'm going to have quite a few dents in my car. Yeah. The controls are a little dodgy, aren't they? Oh, straight through that oil They're not slick. Really and the spin. controlling like cars in a sort of turn. They've they've got inertia which makes them sort of fun and slidey, but they do. I completely span off the track. They do control a bit more like boats uh, rather than cars. Although uh, I'm actually uh, apart from the fact that it gets hooked up occasionally, it's actually quite fun. It's a uh, challenge. I'm not sure the inertia matches racing cars. Watch out for me. Alright, we're across the line and we're just going to sit there and watch that grey car um, well, coming in in last place. Yeah, you have to wait for it to finish, I believe. Span through the oil and it... Uh, oh, we used to have the fun when we were recording keys to sort of like spin them over the, the, over the end line as like they were doing a handbrake turn. That was, that was the theory of why they always spin over. Okay, Andrew, on to the next. We're both through. So basically, you make sure you're not in third place and you go through to the next round. I've uh, got our speech in there again. We always seem to get speech in these early days. We were quite chuffed by uh, writing that system, even though it was a bit scratchy and horrible. Okay, I've got into first place, which I'm quite pleased with. Uh, a bit of a spin there. Uh, oh, then God. I lost it under the bridge. Spinning under a bridge is just a nightmare. Yeah, you've got to make sure that when you go through the tunnels, you just keep a straight line, because when you're underneath, you just can't see what's going on. I mean, it was nice that we were able to sort of make these the road go up and under. Uh, we did all the graphics ourselves, except for the two cars at the top. And they were done by artist uh, James Wilson. Quite. That was the first time we used a, a, an artist or somebody external to help us with the artwork. I really remember doing that digital clock at the top. We were chuffed to bits with that. Yeah, I think it was the kind of thing we saw in shopping centres and stuff, these digital displays, and it's like, ooh, let's see if we can write a digital display. And okay. I'm through. I don't think I am through, which is... Oh, it's just, oh, I've just played rubbish. I was too busy talking. Oh, okay, well, hopeless. Go on, be, then. It'll be on to the next track. Okay, so so what's the novelty about this track? It looks like we've got shortcuts in this one, so... Uh, uh, I do remember doing that Dunlop tyre, which I was quite pleased with. You'll notice that we can only go up and under um, black and white. I think there was some kind of coding issue that we could only... Well, all the collision was based on colour, so uh, different colours just meant different things. Uh, there's a few sort of invisible collision boxes. I, I seem to remember that eight collision boxes that you had to pass through to qualify there as a lap. There were checkpoints, yeah. yeah. If you didn't go through an invisible checkpoint... And it wasn't a true lap and you must have cheated and done a shortcut. Hey, the computer just went through the oil and he's completely spun out and has... No, he knows where he's going. He's, he's taken a shortcut. Very... You've, you've lost it. Oh, you've parked up. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, you're through. Um, let's have a look at the next lap then. There's 14 laps all, uh, 14 tracks. tracks all together. So um, let's see how far I can go. I'm up to track D. It says no save games or any great luxury like that. You'd have to uh, start again from scratch if you mess up. So, um, but looking on the internet, uh, there's a few people who have uh, shown that all the all the tracks are there and they've shown the congratulations screen. Okay, so uh, why did we actually write this game? Um, well. 
BMX simulator from Richard Darling had just come out and was quite successful. That was for the Christmas of 86. And it reminded us of um, a fun little game that we tried writing during the summer holidays, just as a bit of a joke really. It was about a 2CV going around a safari park and having bits ripped off by monkeys. It reminded us, uh, it was the idea we got from um, actually going around um, Longley Safari Park. So we thought that um, looking at uh, looking at BMX Simulator and reminiscing about the Safari game that we could never kind of quite make a fun challenge, perhaps we could do uh, Grand Prix um, cars and racing. That's where the idea came from. We started uh, coding it um, and obviously came up with this game. Which, and then uh, upon release, um, Activision contacted Codemasters with a legal letter uh, saying that we had completely ripped off Super Sprint, which in fact, obviously we hadn't, we knew we hadn't. So uh, the Darlings were quite confident to go ahead and release the game. Um, the story made the press about this being similar to Super Sprint, which only helped sales. The game went on to sell a quarter of a million copies approximately. Um, back then, 100,000 was pretty good, um, and that's what kind of Robin Hood had done. So, um, we're out. Um, I think it's about time to talk about the number of different tracks that we'd actually produced. So, 14 in all. Yeah, we were quite pleased with all the kind of um, tracks weaving in and out and over the top and underneath each other and fond memories of Grand Prix Simulator, um, another big game for us and our first simulator of, of many simulators. It was uh, produced, uh, converted because it was so successful to the Spectrum, to the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800. Those three versions came out about six months later all being programmed by different people and when they were launched um, Codemasters arranged the sponsorship um, with Johnny Dumfries. Yeah, I think he was a Le Mans 24 racing driver and I am, I particularly remember the fact that we went to watch him race at Silverstone which was a, a fun day out. Uh, very noisy. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed our uh, Let's Play of Grand Prix Simulator from 29 years ago. Uh, this is me, Philip, signing off. And me, Andrew. Thank you. Goodbye.